Mirror Slocum 23, you're joining me for Foreign Affairs Chapter 12, Bully Pulpit. Evelyn sits across from you at Camp Herrin's Cafe. You glance at the throng of reporters outside the window, their cameras trained on you. Don't worry, they can't hear anything we're saying. That glass is literally bulletproof. A glance at the two entrances to the cafe, Tatum stands at one, Evelyn's bodyguard at the other. You're safe, but you raise your mug in front of your lips to be sure. So what's this about? You said we needed to talk? I need to tell you something in confidence. I trust that as a friend. You can keep this to yourself? Um, of course. I have feelings for someone else. The only reason I agree to a relationship ruse is because I thought they didn't feel the same. So we need to figure out how we want to end things between us. Wait. Who is it? I didn't come here to gossip. Then you picked the wrong fake boyfriend. Come on, spill. Fine. It's someone from our class. A friend, at least. I always thought we'd only be friends. Is it Peter? No. Well, ever since the photo match, I've been seeing Henry in a different light. And the other time, those feelings have... Uh, uh, have grown. Henry's your crush? I wouldn't have guessed, but I can see an opposites attract thing there. It's not just that. There's more to him than uh, most people give him credit for. We had so much fun skiing yesterday, and after, we sat together drinking cocoa by the fire, talking for hours. Oh, that's a good sign. I think so. And I think something might have happened last night that is if I weren't in a relationship with you. But, well, I am, and I know there are a lot of eyes on us. Everyone trails off, looking out the window, pensively at the paparazzo pressed against the glass. You know what? Never mind. I forget I said anything. Evelyn, you can trust me. I'm here for you. Promise. I know, it's just... I feel so risky. What if we go through all this and Henry doesn't even like me? Plus a messy breakup would damage my mother's campaign. No way. Not accepting it. You finally found someone you like. You can't just give up on the first sign of trouble. But your reputation is at stake. Mm, screw my reputation. I'm tired of all of us having to sacrifice the way we want to live for the sake of reputation. I may not be able to live or be with a person I'd really like to, but you can. I'm gonna help you make this happen. That's at the window where the paparazzi remain poised and ready. I wonder if there was a way to get some privacy so we could think. It's like they're always waiting to catch us in the middle of some drama. Of course they are. They make a living off of other people's dirty laundry. It's the answer to our problems. It is? If we stage a big public breakup with me as the bad guy, the press will cover it and you'll be justified in moving on. Hmm. But how does that help you and Henry? Or your parents, for that matter? Didn't they make you do this? Evelyn waves your way, your concerns. My mom wanted me to fake date you to show the world that I can relax and have some fun. Dating someone else accomplishes the same thing. As for Henry, well, I'll have to cross that bridge when I come to it, but I won't do anything you don't feel comfortable with. As if on cue, one of the photographers breaks away from the pack to bang on the window closest to you. Hey, Evelyn, smile! Back up right now. Security gets the rogue reporter under control, but it's just another reminder of what constant invasive presence they're becoming in your life. What do you say, Clark? Should we give them a real show? Now's your chance to have some fun with the paparazzi and win diplomacy points with Evelyn and Henry. Fine. Also, imagine if they would have actually allowed us to have a choice with her. Let's do this. Uh, just give me one moment. Evelyn signals to the waiter, who jumps to attention. We're ready for the bill. Thank you. Right away, miss. 
As the waiter leaves, Evelyn conspicuously eyes the young man's ass. Ets. They saw that. This is my chance. What the hell, Evelyn? How could you? Are you seriously just checking out someone else in front of me? <sighs> I'm thoroughly modern woman, Clark. I have needs. That you're clearly not delivering, Clark. But we're together. Don't you care that you're hurting my feelings? Your feelings are your business, not mine. That's opposite of what it means to be in a relationship. Look at him. He's like Pierce Morgan. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a reporter creeping far enough into the restaurant to record sound and video Tatum most of him, but you raise your voice. Tatum, get my coat, I'm leaving. I need to deal with... Ow! Tatum eyes a reporter, but does as you say. You stand dramatically and Evelyn jumps up. What do you want from me? Oh, just some basic respect seems like a good place to start. You know what? I'm done with this. You're so clingy. Clingy. Well, you're a manipulative robot. Everything is just a calculation to you, isn't it? Well, it's time to subtract me from your life. We're through. Now for the big finale. You look around the table. Your cup of coffee is half empty and cold. Your pancakes are congealing and a mug of maple syrup sits forgotten at the edge of your plate. Listen, listen. The coffee, while it's still cold, can be drank. Maple syrup. Plate of pancakes. You pick up the plate of pancakes and fling one soggy disc at her face. You know what? Eat me, Evelyn. What the? It sticks for a moment before peeling off and plopping onto the table. Evelyn wipes off the remaining butter with a napkin. Seriously, Clark? That's what you get for treating me this way. Evelyn storms off. Her bodyguard a few paces behind her. The reporter takes advantage of the chaos to rush inside. Clark, care, care to comment about what just happened? No, I can't believe she'd treat me like this. <sighs> so stupid. A little later, you return to the lodge and find Evelyn waiting for you in the lobby. But do you think it worked? Mmm, definitely. You were incredible. Why is my feed blowing up with a video of you two screaming at each other? That wasn't really screaming. Now this is entertainment. I've gotta hand it to you. You two make a great couple, at least for the breakup, that is. You broke up? You notice the flash of hope in Henry's eyes and have to bite back your smile. It's true, but it was amicable despite what the press thinks. Boring. I can't believe you're stealing away this opportunity for this group to have some real drama. Mm, we can make that happen. And in Spirit Lane, I believe you owe me a drink. It's not even noon yet. Zara leads Blaine away. You turn back to Henry. Yeah, actually, our whole relationship was uh, a publicity stunt. Our PR team's arranged it after my scandal. Really? That's good. I, I mean, uh... Evelyn smiles at Henry, her expression soft. I think I know exactly what you mean. Oh, uh, really? Of course. I mean, I hope I do. Ah, uh, they just need one more nudge. Listen, this is where you grab both of them by the back of the head like dolls and say, Now kiss! Hey. <laughs> Henry, were you going to hit the slopes again? Uh, yeah, I was gonna hit another uh, triple black diamond, then maybe hit the sauna. You wanna join? Nah, too treacherous for me. I'll probably just head up to my room. I'd be interested, but I should probably change first. Give me 30 minutes to go get ready. Hmm, sounds good. I'll catch you two later. Enjoy the rest of your morning. Later that afternoon. You return to the lodge after a few runs on the slopes. Tatum trails behind you, but stops just short of the lobby. What's your plan for the rest of the day? Uh, why are you trying to keep me from getting into more trouble? Always, but today specifically. DeMarco will be taking over soon, so I want to give him a heads up on the shift change. 
Well, you won't have to worry about me. I'm just going to hang out with a few of my friends. But uh, I'll be missing you the whole time. You know, you're my favorite bodyguard and all. Flatter me all you want. I'm not going to tell him to let you sneak out. Oh, worth a try. Now go relax. That's an order. Yes, sir. You head inside as Tatum and DeMarco do the handoff. You cross the lobby to find D and your friends gather around a crackling fire. Hey, Clark. Come warm up. If our company isn't enough enticement, we've got spiked hot chocolate. Why are you wearing a see-through black ensemble that I just now noticed and I should be smacked for 12 chapters later? How can I say no to that? You join them and smiles. Peter hands you a mug. Listen, I know, I'm a guy who has other priorities. Do they, uh, have this much snow back in uh, Olmeria, Peter? A piles and piles of it every winter, but the countryside is beautiful in the spring. Do bad there's nothing to do there. What's the national pastime again, watching wheat grow? Wheat farmers are on the backbone of our economy. Uh, you're kind of proving our point, Peter. You want to take a little fun, come to... Eschstein. Our capital is some of the best nightclubs in the world. Yes, and you would know, seeing as you've had public scandals in pretty much every one of them. He turns back to Peter with a smile. I'd love to see the Elmerian countryside someday. Oh, I'm sure Philip will give you a tour. Right, Philip. An awkward silence falls over the group and you clear your throat standing. <clears throat> um... Looks like I uh, need a refill. Uh, next round of hot cocoa is on me. You head over to the bar at the corner of the restaurant and find Blaine sitting on the counter. His hair is wet and his fingertips are pruney. Did you seriously come to a ski resort just to spend all your time in a hot tub? I'm a simple creature, Clark. Don't deny me my pleasure. Hmm, fine, but don't forget to invite me next time. I invited you last time. Sometimes I need a little... Self-care. Hmm, but you're missing out on the Clark care, which is even better. Hmm, I do like the sound of that. You're about to respond when your phone starts buzzing from Mom. Uh-oh. Let me guess. Your mom's calling. Hmm, yeah, she's probably wondering why I broke up with Evelyn. I should take this. Hmm, good luck. You nod and hurry to the privacy of your room. Once inside, you finally answer, <clears throat> uh, hi, Mom. What's... Are you alone? No, Mom, I was doing a handy. Uh, yeah, I'm in my room, why? My new approval numbers just came in, and they're worse than ever before. Louis Wright is hot on my heels and singing my ratings. It's a disgrace. People are probably just intrigued by him because he's new. I'm sure they'll come to their senses before the election. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Plus, I've been underestimating him. Appeal to the large subset of the population. Uh, he has a way of spinning everything, so he looks morally superior, and I look like a fool. And unfortunately, your scandal has given him a lot of ammo. Mm, don't worry, Mom. You can still change their minds. The campaign isn't over yet. You've still got plenty of time to turn the public around. Why are you calling your son about everything that happens in your life? <sighs> Not with mail-in ballots going out in a few weeks. Our window of opportunity is shrinking fast. Do you know how many questions I answered about the foreign policy in our press conference this morning? I'm guessing not many. None. Every reporter only wanted to ask about my out-of-control son. Mom. There are real issues that I need to, that need to be discussed, Clark. And the peace summit is coming up. But no one will focus on important issues if there's something more tantalizing out there. I swear, if I, you knew what I had to deal with... What she's had to deal with? I should speak up. Mom, I know you're having a hard time, and so am I. You're not the only one we're dealing with their BS, and I'm not even uh, the one running for office. I'm not the one who got called with my pants down, Clark. So stop throwing stones, hmm? You threw the first barrage, I simply deflected them. Your mom takes a deep breath. <sighs> I'm sorry, Clark, I shouldn't have keep bringing up the past. What's done is done, and we can't change it. And at the end of the day, I don't know if you're the reason for my numbers falling, but we can't ignore the possibility, and we can't afford another scandal. 
Well, it'd be a shame if I had my pants down right now, huh, Mom? You yeah, <laughs> Seriously, this is so stupid. <sighs> you don't have to tell me twice. With the Bee Summit coming up for the third reminder in a row, I don't want to take another chances. My role there depends on being taken seriously as a leader. If the other world leaders don't think I can maintain control in my own home, how will they ever take me seriously on a global stage? How long have you been president? Seriously, how long? I need you to step up in real role model. No more messing around of any kind with anyone. Mom, how about you take some of the responsibility here? You're the one running for president, not me. If the public really thought you were doing a good job, they wouldn't care about some photo of me. But your mom doesn't stop talking and you realize she's not even listening to you. I'm leaving for the West Coast first thing in the morning, but I've spoken to Winston about keeping your redemption tour at full speed until... Mom! You need to listen to me for once. I'm sick of all this. I'm sick of my life revolving around your career. I'm sick of paparazzi stalking me, and I'm sick of the fact that you're basically agreeing with everyone who says I should be ashamed of what happened. Don't twist my words. I never said anything about inherently wrong with your actions. I just... Yes. Then why don't you say that to your precious voters? Why don't you tell the media that they're the ones in the wrong? Don't bother answering. I already know the truth. You care more about the public things than you do about me. Clark, I've given you the best life I can. You've had privileges other kids could only dream of. Another president might have distanced themselves. But you... At least I'm supporting you. No, you're not. You let out a bitter laugh. Uh-huh. So, now you're just trying to make me feel guilty for being upset? You know what, Mom? I hope Lewis Wright wins. Maybe then I'll get my mom back. Personally, I haven't seen her since your inauguration. Clark! No, you probably lost her before that. You end the call, cutting her off mid-sentence. You throw your phone on the bed in frustration and sink to the floor, letting out an aggravated sigh. Psst, throw the phone out the window! Let it melt into the snow and then become irreparably damaged. Kind of like your relationship with your mother. Marshmallow bound, rounds the corner, bounding towards you and nuzzle your hand. Ow. Mm, sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to scare you. You lean your head against the wall as you stroke Marshmallow absentmindedly. Mm, I can't believe Mom's blaming me for literally everything that's gone wrong with our campaign. The walls of your room seem to close in on you as you look around, and suddenly, you can't take it. I have to get out of here. You angrily storm down the hall of the lodge, your mom's words echoing in your ears. I don't know if you're the reason my numbers keep falling. Whoa, Clark. Are you okay? I haven't been okay since I was born. God damn it! You round the corner and almost run into Aina. Her eyes are wide and filled with concern. Mm, I'm okay. <sighs> this, uh... I had a conversation I'd rather forget. Do you want to talk about it? We'd be here all day if I did. Mm, I don't mind. You're always so calm and composed, Dana. How do you do it? You have all this responsibility and it doesn't seem to faze you at all. Don't you get tired of other people's expectations being told what to do? Yeah, exactly. Well, I certainly don't have the same level of responsibility as you or your classmates, but lately I've been trying to focus on who I'm working so hard for. I won't say it's easy because it isn't, but taking stock of the people in your corner, that helps. Hmm, yeah, at least I've got you on my side. Of course you do, and you know you can always come to me when we need when you need to talk, day or night. She smiles, putting a hand on your shoulder despite the warmth of her touch, you sigh. Oh still. I should probably avoid you tonight. If I get caught in another scandal. You rub your forehead, your mom's voice still echoing in your mind, finally you let out a breath. I need to clear my head if anyone asks I'm going for a walk. If it helps, I hear there's a lovely secluded lake on the property. Might just be the calming setting you need right now. Hmm, that sounds perfect, thanks. You exit Lodge, stepping onto the snow, and begin crunching your way towards the tree line. Notice we never get to see DeMarco. It's not long before Agent DeMarco joins you a few paces behind. God damn it! Pixelberry, one step behind me, but still one step. You maybe give me some space. That's not protocol. 
<sighs> DeMarco, I'm not asking you to leave. Just don't be all up in my business, please. I just need some room to breathe and feel like a normal person, even if I'm not. I... DeMarco hesitates and nods. He falls back and you sigh with relief as you trudge on. Oh, I don't understand why Mom's acting this way. She's never behaved like this before. You approach a beautiful frozen lake and take a seat on a rock. DeMarco stands a respectable distance away as you stare at the crystalline surface. Probably she's just afraid. I know she says Louis Wright isn't good for Rutherland, but is she freaking out because she thinks she's fighting for her country, or because she's uh, just afraid of not being the one in charge? You settle back, taking in the blue sky, the soft flakes of snow drifting through the air, the gentle sound of the breeze whistling through the trees. You don't find answers, but after a while, your heart slows its pace, your body relaxing, and you find something that almost feels like peace. Suddenly, a twig snaps behind you, and breaking the silence, and you turn around. DeMarco, is that... Mast assailant. Uh... Don't they get tired of reusing your, like, look? Oh, there's two of them. Oh, no! Call for help. Uh, why not? DeMarco, help! You take a deep breath and yell at the top of your lungs as two masked assailants run towards you. Clock! Marco sprints towards you, but before, her, before he can reach you, one of the assailants charges. Ah! You try to duck out of the way, but it's too late. They've already thrown something right at you. Scarlet paint. Whoa. Consider this a scarlet warning, Kent. Get away from Clark. Marco tackles the first assailant on the ground as you scramble back, and you realize you're covered in blood-colored liquid as the other assailant starts taking pictures of you. Won't this look nice in the tabloids? They shove their camera into the pocket and run off, disappearing into the trees. DeMarco growls and his walkie-talkie holding down the first assailant. I need backup at the lake now. Oh no, drama, guys, drama! You don't quite register what happens next. Your heart pounds in your ears, drowning out all the other sounds as the rest of the security team arrives to either protect you or pursue the fleeing assailant. Clark, you okay? Did they hurt you? I... You look down and see that you're still sitting in a puddle of red, splattered snow. Blood? Paint? And it puts an arm around you, helping you stand. We're taking you somewhere safe. Before you know it, you're in a small, clean cabin. You hunker down on the couch, still in shock, and Tatum sits beside you. You can feel the tension rolling off his body, but it's clear he's holding himself back for your sake. How are you feeling? I don't know. I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything. Thank you for being here with me, though. Tatum glances around the room, but it's just the two of you. He reaches over to take your hand. I'm not going anywhere, I promise. Tatum, who were those guys? Why did they attack me? They said something about our donors, they were being hauled away, but we won't know more until we finish interrogating them. Oh, so they caught the other one. Our donor? Tatum's expression softens when he takes in your worried features. <sighs> They're just trying to cover up their true identities by exploiting the feud. We have no reason to believe that anyone from Ardona had anything to do with this. Argent Agent DeMarco enters the room, interrupting the conversation. Mr. Kent, I'm so sorry. I couldn't... I left you. Marco trails off his words, catching in his throat. By the way, why are you wearing red? It's okay, DeMark. I'm okay. And I don't blame anyone but my attackers for what happened. You might not, but there will be an internal investigation. How could you let them get past you? The assailants were organized. They used a third of combats to draw me away, and since I was the only bodyguard present... made him curses under his breath. Can't be arranged security made us sloppy. We'll have to double our details from now on. Triple it! Your heart sinks as you contemplate the repercussions on Tatum's statement. There goes any privacy for the next... ever... Marco clears the throat. <clears throat> um, I have to give my full report, but I want to see that you are okay with uh, my own eyes, Mr. Kent. Marco walks off, leaving you and Tatum alone in the safe house once more. He stands and offers you his hand. 
Mon, I'll take you to the Van Cross. Right now? We're not scheduled to go back until tomorrow. Exactly. Better to keep your movements unexpected in case your attackers have friends. Plus, our team has more control on campus than here. I look out the window at the lodge, and I'm seeing that for the first time how open and vulnerable it looks, and how many places there are for people to hide. Clark, please. Let me take care of you. Let Tatum take you to Van Cross early. Fine. <laughs> oh, get me out of here. For a brief moment, a look of pure relief crosses Tatum's face. He covers it quickly and then radios the other members of the security staff to tell them the plan. He moves around the safe house quickly to gather his things into a duffel bag. What's going to happen with my stuff? The other guards will pack it up and bring it back to you and your, their vehicle. Let's go. Where are we going? The lodge is back the other way. True, but the motorcycle is this way. Uh, motorcycle? You brought a motorcycle on a ski trip? Technically, you did. We always have at least one or two for your motorcade, even when they, uh, you have alternative motives for transportation. Oh, well, that makes sense. Here we are. You arrive at a row of gleaming motorcycles. Tatum pulls a leather jacket from his duffel bag and hands it to you. Put it on. You pull on the jacket and zip it up. It's too big, and it's uh, but it's comfortable, warm, and smells like home. Tatum hands you a black motorcycle helmet. Ready. As I'll ever be. Yep, it really looks black. The wind whips at your jacket as the motorcycle roars down the lodge drive towards the winding mountain road. You wrap your arms tightly around Tatum's waist, letting your head rest against his back. You okay back there? So let me get this. He's security. You're at risk because someone put pain on you, but this man is going to take you down a frozen lodge way on a motorcycle. Okay. I don't see any problem there. <sighs> Just glad I have you to lean on. Tatum lays his hand over yours, giving it a gentle squeeze. Me too. Before long, the powdery snow high up in the mountains gives way to a vibrant green countryside. You shudder, unable to shake the image of your attackers from your mind. Tatum, can you pull over? I, I need a moment. Tatum maneuvers the bike to the shoulder of the road. You get off, taking deep breaths. You all right? I just... I think reality is finally sinking in. God, we shouldn't have been even be stopping, should we? But what if someone... Don't worry, you're safe. No one knows where we are. This whole thing is so messed up. I've never been this scared. And not just for myself. What about my mom? Has anyone ever told her what happened? And my friends are still at the lodge? And the team has already debriefed your mom and your classmate security details. You have nothing to worry about. I believe that was this morning, too. But look what happened. What if... He puts his hands on your shoulders, his expression determined. Everything's gonna be okay, Clark, I promise. But... I don't want anyone else to get hurt because of me. No one's going to get hurt. And none of this is your fault. Of course it is. My mom's weak spot, our easiest target. That does not make it your fault you didn't ask to be the president's only child, and you sure as hell didn't ask to, for politics to be such a blood sport. You can't blame a ship for getting caught in a storm, but you can blame the captain for not avoiding it. Tatum cups his chin in his hands, his swarm fingertips gently resting along your jaw. <sighs> it won't be like this forever, Clark, I promise. Right, of course, Rutherland doesn't have term limits after all. Or does. Not what I meant. We will make sure whoever was behind this attack is locked up. They won't be able to hurt you ever again. Then things will go back to how they were before. You look up at Tatum, holding his intense gaze. <sighs> what if I don't want things to go back to how they were before? He reach for his hand, and he lets you take it. Clark. The wind picks up, dancing through the brush, and causing Tatum to snap back to a high alert. Tatum? We should go. Are you okay? Am I okay? How can you even be thinking about me? 
But no, I'm not okay. If anything happened to you today, I... He stepped closer as he tries to fail, and fails to finish his sentence. <sighs> I'd never have forgiven myself. But you weren't on duty. You weren't even supposed to be there. Doesn't matter, it's my job to protect you. Tatum, you did. You were one of the first people by my side, even though you weren't on duty. And I'm okay physically. No one hurt me. If I can manage to pull or put all the what-ifs out of my mind, surely you can. Deal? Deal. You take a moment longer to take in the view, watching the trees sway in a slight breeze, whispering down the mountain. Are you okay to go on? We should keep moving if we want to get back before dark. Yeah, I'm good, I think. Thanks. Tatum gives you a long look, holding your gaze. I'll always be here for you, no matter what. And with that, you climb back onto the motorcycle and resume your journey back to Van Cross, watching the world go by in a blur. Soon, the sun sets, and the countryside gives way to the familiar surroundings of Van Cross. You climb off the motorcycle and pull off your helmet with a sigh of relief. Stay close, let me take lead. Gladly. You stay just behind Tatum as he cautiously leads you through the quad, eye sweeping every possible angle. But um -tsh. Until at last, you're in the suite with the door locked behind you. You wait, arms hugging tightly around your chest as Tatum checks every room and draws every curtain. All clear. We're safe. Eh, good. It's getting late. We should get you something to need. You glance towards your room, where the inviting pillows and thick soft blankets on your bed make you realize just how exhausted you are. Actually, I think I'm just going to sleep for as long as possible. Uh, do you think you could stay in the room with me tonight, though? Of course. Let me, uh, make you a bed on the floor. No need. It's warm enough to sleep without blankets. I mean, they are in a Kevlar suit, so it is actually warm. Right, I guess all that army training comes in handy sometimes. You change in your pajamas and then get a bed. You glance at Tatum as you click out the light. Good night, Tatum. Good night, Clark. You hear the rustle of his clothes as he lies down on the floor beside the door. You close your eyes, finding feeling, finally feeling safe again. You're fixing yourself and Tatum some breakfast the next morning when the door bangs open. Tatum's on his feet in front of you in an instant. Hello, Murphy. Nice nice to see you, too. Don't get your taser in a twist. It's just me. Where is he? I want a moment with Clark. Wave Tatum off, and he joins Murphy outside. Before you know it, D has you in a death grip hug. It's not death by snoo snoo. Thank goodness you're all right. I heard you were attacked, but everyone was so cagey about the details. What happened? Tell me everything. You take a deep breath and tell Dee about everything that happened at the leg. Oh my god, Clark, no wonder you've been so on edge. I can't imagine how you're feeling. Ugh, honestly, I never thought something like this could happen. I know that being in the bubbly eye means sacrificing my privacy, but actually getting attacked, I was never expecting them. And most people don't. No one should have to expect that, public figure or not. I'll never understand what makes people think they're justified in hurting someone they don't even know. Marshmallow pads into the room, stretching luxuriously before hopping onto the couch and curling beside you. Hey, buddy. I missed you. I hope that means you missed me, too. You let out a sigh and rub your temples. Ah. <sighs> What I don't understand is how they even found me. I wasn't planning to leave the lodge that afternoon, and I don't think anyone else saw me go. Did you tell anyone where you were going? Yes, Henry and Evelyn. I didn't even tell the rest of my security team, Ali DeMarco. No one else even knew about that leg. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Come on. It's all it's all coming in place. That's that's right. Come on. What? There was one person who knew where I was. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Aina. Which means I know who the traitor is. Oh, no. 
No, 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 don't do this to me. <laughs> Who is behind your attack? And why did they betray you? Find out in the next chapter of Foreign Affairs. That's right, we left them two to go on the slopes, and Aina gave us a suggestion. I don't think it's Aina. I mean, I don't, I don't think it would be, but hey, you know what, let's put it this way. As a person who has issues um, trusting peeps, yeah, about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, I already distrusted people before being a content creator, so, and that's being in the public eye, so, <laughs> yeah. Like, anymore with people announcing that they've been attacked online or offline by a bunch of people, and the things that I have gone through as a content creator, I'm, I would really not be surprised if I ever went into a store and someone tried to beat the crap out of me. But that's just how I felt, because it's actually happened before before I even became one. So again, I'm always on high alert. But anyway, without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content, um, please do so. Again, there's also a join button if you want to become a, um, a supporting member of this community. But like I said, there's a couple links in the description as well. Um, just real quick, hope you're all having a good day. So for those of you in America who actually qualify, yay, now we just wait for Biden's signature, yay, yay, the first two I never even saw a penny of, and finally I'll actually get something, finally, anyway, um, also, with that uh, breaking news, I hope you're all having a good day, it's been some nice weather, and hopefully it continues to stay that way, thanks for watching, peace out.